We have a brand new psychological thriller on Netflix. Typically, I'm not huge on streamer exclusives. I often find them lackluster or just downright insultingly bad. But I am on this never-ending quest to find something that stands out and rises above the pack of mediocrity. Now we have a new film I'm going to talk about right now. Don't move is the title of that movie, but also don't move because I'm going to review it right now in a spoiler-free video. Before I begin, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe, the notification bell, and even liking the video later on if you in fact like the video, I would really appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm or something, they say. That's, a, that's what the kids tell me. All right, let's talk about this. Don't Move is a hour and a half film. God, I love the hour and a half movies, especially when they have such a simplistic story like this one does. It is rated R. It's got some swearing, it's got some violence, it's got some blood, a couple, one or two intense shots in the movie. Otherwise, not too bad of a watch for anyone that has a queasy stomach on them. You'll be fine. Unless you have a hard time listening to someone heavily breathe, which I'm not gonna lie, it can trigger me a little bit. And there is gonna be a good amount of that in the film because we're gonna be following a character named Iris, played very well here by Kelsey Asbile. She's a young woman who has just lost her son and she's kind of okay with dying herself. In fact, she was about one step away from doing just that. But a kind soul who happens to be on this same hillside convinces her not to. Really, this thing's more of a mountain. Uh, l l listen, l really quick overview of what happened here. This is in the first five or so minutes. We have learned that Iris has lost a child. A child that died on that very mountaintop. Her and her husband, for some reason, let the kid who looks to be no more than five in the photo they show, just run off, frolic around the countryside collecting sticks. And apparently at some point he took a bad step off the side of this massive mountain they decided to climb. And this was not an easy trek. I don't even know how they got the poor bastard up there to begin with. There are giant rocks they have to traverse. It's a steep up hill jaunt there's no way and if i could be emily blunt with you i think it's bad parenting i said it i know it's it's insensitive she lost the child due to that bad parenting but this is not based on a true story and this is a fictitious character so i'm okay i feel comfortable in my skin saying that all right no need to clutch the pearls about it but that's not the point of the story the point of the story is whether or not iris has any life left inside of her worth fighting to keep because it turns out Richard's kind of an asshole and he didn't want her to die then so that he can have his way with her later. Now, what does that entail? It's hard to know. I think at one point he mentions braiding her hair, but he never really goes into specifics. And the rest of the movie is gonna be about the hunt because she is able to get away, but not before he injected her with a substance that paralyzes her. And time is of the essence here. She only has about 20 minutes before she's gonna go completely comatose. And what the hell is she gonna do when she can't move? Oh my God, is that why it's called Don't Move? Uh, no, I knew that. But here, seriously, this movie I thought was all right. For a Netflix exclusive, any streaming exclusive really, being all right is a very good testament to the film. I don't think it's as good as last week's Woman of the Hour, but at a tight hour and a half, there isn't a lot of slowdown. This movie's kicking in. It's going pretty strong. As far as character choices, there are a few that made me pissed, but then they were almost instantly kind of saved by a pre You know, it's like you get in a situation and all you're thinking is, why? Why is this person not asking this question? Why are they not looking over here? Why are they? Oh, they finally did. So it kind of makes, it just takes its time to get somewhere that you expect them to go earlier. What an amazing vague way for me to describe something. You see, you got the thing and you got the other thing and then this thing happens, which causes this thing. Anyway, let's talk production. This is clearly a smaller scale film. It's produced by, I believe, Sam Raimi, which is random. But even though it's just these two characters for the majority of the film, they do a good job with the cinematography. There's a lot of wide sweeping, vast shots of the woods. The music keeps you on edge, it keeps you invested. Again, the woman specifically does a really good job. As for Richard, that character, it's giving Josh Hartnett from Trap vibes. And to me, that was eh. I don't need to see Richard sit down across from someone else and try to charm his way out of a situation. Every time these moments start to happen, I rolled my eyes hard going, come on, Richard, just, 
just kill this person or move on. I don't want you to have to do this whole song and dance every time. Yeah, it's a fine watch. There's nothing amazing going on here. There's no aha reveals. There's no performative moments that stand head and shoulders above anything else I've seen this year. It's just a competently made, competently acted, competently directed film. Would I recommend you watch it? Eh, sure. I guess if you like the survival thriller type of film, yeah, this is a fine watch. Again, because it's shorter, it has a focused narrative, that helps things out. And the whole like paralyzed, don't move angle to it does keep things kind of fresh for a while. And so there you have it, don't move. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Let me know your thoughts though. Put them in the comments below the video. Please again, think of subscribing to the channel. I post movie reviews every week, covering the big ones in theaters, covering the streamers that come out on Fridays and everything in between that I can find time to cover, I will. Like the video if you wouldn't mind. And lastly, if you love what I'm doing here, I am a one man operation and uh, the, the best way to help keep the lights on for the channel is to become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's different tier levels with exclusive reviews every month, along with 300 other videos and counting that you get access to. I would appreciate the support and hopefully I'll catch you next time.